How y'all doing? Yeah. New York, y'all doing all right? All right, all right. Yeah, come on, a little better. New York, yeah. how y'all doing? Yeah. All right, all right. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 This is Color of Noise, y'all. Oh, man. We had a good time last night, and we're going to keep this energy going, keep these vibes flowing. Um, oh, seeing y'all beautiful faces already. I'm like, just hype. Uh, let me tell y'all a little bit about, you know, Color of Noise, what the spirit of this is. Um, I'm honored to be celebrating African American Music Month. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. And you know, this, the Blue Note has always been kind, gracious to me for over the years. I've come here and experimented with, you know, projects of my own. Um, been here with the great Malcolm Miller, Terrence Blanchard. Yeah. Uh, you know, we graced the stage with Roy Hargrove here, when Jill Newman brought us here. And, um, I'm here with my brother Robert Glasper in this yeah. experiment yeah. where, you know, one of our great brothers, Casey Benjamin, would stand right here and yeah. give his heart, rest in peace, every night. So in the spirit of honoring this month, you know, I wanted to, you know, since y'all come and celebrate being in the moment with me, I wanted to give y'all something unique. Y'all to experience me putting things on the line every night in a unique way. And, um... Some of you know, some of you may not, that you know I'm a composer, orchestrator, I do a lot of that kind of stuff. And that's been a big part of my journey over the last couple of years. Thank y'all for being patient on the new record. I'm gonna get it together, I'm gonna put some new music out. Like, we won't go with it, I wanna see y'all here, but you know, the thing with this orchestrating, you know, to really do the music justice, you know, it, it takes sacrifice. You know, it takes just being in the moment like every note you write, every phrase you write for people that are gonna breathe it like it's your last, you know? So I try to give it that focus. So tonight we decided to add string quartet and to give a little spirit of what I've been working on to my live performance. So y'all are hearing this week, me with the Color Noise String Quartet for the first time within this within this framework. So I want y'all to just show them love, be yeah. this moment with us. Start my journey, uh, touching on my first record, Live Today. How many of y'all check that out? Oh, yeah. yeah. All right. I shouldn't be able to not get to Okay. We're going to talk about that later. But uh, uh, my first album, I started with a, um, it started with a theme called Table John. Uh, just ideas that came to the head. I used to just you know, record, you know, little notes into my little mini disc in Camden, New Jersey, where I lived at the time. And I'm um, gonna start my journey there. It's called Table John and go on the journey with us. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
Thank you all. Feel the man? Yeah. 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 Before we get going, I want to say happy birthday to Beth. Y'all came from the UK? Thank so much, man. Thank y'all for being out here and celebrating being with us. Hope you enjoy the show. Happy birthday. All right.
Thank <laughs> you. 
Martinez. Uh, my, my. You having a good time? Yeah. 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 Uh, love to show honor, respect, homage to one of the greats of our time, the great Rain Shorter. Ooh, uh, yeah. Yeah, the song here is that we also recorded on my album, Color of Noise, called Fall. And, uh, you know, we try to take a moment every time we can um, just to show love. Uh, this next piece, In That Same Spirit, um, you know, I've been telling y'all a little bit about my story and... Uh, I mentioned the orchestrating and all that stuff and you know, composing and working with symphonies. And, you know, it started off as an idea um, <coughs> where the opportunities hadn't come, you know? It was just, <laughs> all I had was sheet music to write and work on. All I had was the Philadelphia Public Library that I'd go to and just check out scores because they got all those scores there. And I'd walk in, you know, because nobody looked like me. I was showing up to Tim's Coral Rose and, and they was like, well, what is he doing in this section, you know? But I stayed curious. Um, yeah. Yeah. And you know, when I was touring, you know, I, there were a lot of greats. Um, I saw my sister Angelica earlier. I, I, I got to mention some of these people. There were people that noticed me putting in work when nobody was watching. I thought nobody was watching. Uh, people like Mogu Miller. Um, people like the great Terrence Blanchard, who... Um, you know, saw me putting in that work and um, he offered opportunities. He was like, hey, come to LA, man, we'll work on this. I was in his band. We did a bunch of records together and, um, you know, he just honored the work. You know, he just said, listen, man, I got a film score coming up. Hey, will you do this? He, he's the one that put me on my first film. First film I ever scored, Jackson Pollock. It was through him, you know, first movie, She Hate Me. Uh, I was, you know, through him and uh, fast forward and there were other people that came into my life uh, that was paying attention when I didn't realize people were watching. Uh, Jason Oran was one of them. Speaking, you know, to the National Symphony Orchestra on my behalf without me knowing. And I got a call out the blue saying, hey, uh, we're about to celebrate Illmatic. You wanna write for Nas? Cool, uh, the show's coming up, come on, boom, you got it. And it was thrown in the fire. And um, that fire was one of the best moments of my life, because it was just like, look, that's what we worked for. But it wasn't anything, you know, I, I, I love, I appreciate how things read in my life and career on paper, but in reality, you know, it's, it's really a, I'm really a product of others that saw and said, listen, man, you know, go for it. So I want to take a minute, like I show Wayne Shorter love, um, I want to take a minute to also show Houston's own Jason Moran love, this is a song he wrote called uh, General Shift South. I used to listen to that a lot and just figure out, you know, how, what he was thinking, what he was trying to figure out. And um, this is featuring the quartet, hope you like it. And uh, for those of you who don't know about Jason Moran, do the homework, check him out. Check out all these names that I'm mentioning, uh, cause they deserve it. This is General Shift South. Yeah.
Thank y'all so much. Clap on yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Now y'all give us life, you know, so these conversations with y'all, that's why we do this. Mm -hmm. yeah, so thank you. Y'all make this possible. Mm -hmm. yeah. Love you, Gary. Love you too. Celebration of some of the heroes. We're gonna show us a little bit of love to the great Duke Ellington. Yeah. As well as Jay Dilla a little bit. Yeah. All right, here we go.
his like almost your whole life <laughs> like for real it's, it's, it's crazy um i'm originally from uh west philadelphia actually and uh, my mother sang she was a singer and uh they recommended uh this this church like let her sing on the choir and that's exactly what she started doing 
church was two blocks from our house where we lived, and it was uh, 50th and Spruce, Beulah Baptist Church. She was saying church choirs, Patty LaBelle, and you know, all these different people. And I, I would just hear music all the time. I, she would sit me in front of the bass player, and she would say, uh, you sit right there in the front row and don't, get, don't start no trouble. And that's exactly what I did. I didn't want to disappoint mama. And the person that I was set right in front of, I said, I want to be like him. Bass player, Joel Ruffin. And that stuck with me. Um, you know, those that are close to me know, before we could afford instruments, before we could afford any of that, like it was a dream. I said, I wanted to do that. You know, so we moved to Jersey. And um, before we could afford the instruments, you know, uh, we had the radio. She would put on the radio every, every night. And she would say, listen, just listen to stuff. And I had no control over what she would play. She would play, um, you know, Power 99 at that time in Philly. And then she would put on something else, you know, go to the AM station, put on gospel um, for the night. And then she put on the, you know, what we call classical. She put on that station. And I was always hearing all these things. So I would just end up just chasing instruments. When I would see something, I want to follow it. And <laughs> one time we were coming to Jersey from Philly. <coughs> Pulled up to a convenience store, went in. Um, I was in the car while my mom was inside, and his dad pulled up next to me. And uh, he had all these instruments in the car, like drums, a Kurzweil PC-88, all kind of stuff in his car. And I just looked and I said, I want to be, I want to go where he going. It made no sense. But my mother came back to the car and I told her that. I said, I want to, let's go where, he, where he's going. And for whatever reason, that day, no lie, right? <laughs> that day, she was like, all right. And uh, he got in the car, he pulled off, went two blocks down the street, and he was going to this church. Went inside, brought the instruments in, she let me sit outside and just wait for them to start. And she, was, she said again, don't get in no trouble. She stayed outside, and I went inside and listened to the music. And his dad inspired me so much, I just watched him and I didn't leave, you know. Um, and uh, we started going to that church, and um, his dad ended up being you know, very influential in my life. Like put me on my first records, some of my first tours with the great late gospel singer James Moore at 13. That was, you know, connected to his family. And my first records that I was on at 14 with James Poyser, and um, a lot of that, that was, you know, connected to his father. So fast forwarding now to be on the same stage with this gentleman. You know, we've been working together what a year. Um, it's just, everybody says, it just feels like we've known each other, been playing together our whole lives. Our first time really playing together was last year, you know, um, and I, I'm really excited for y'all to hear him on this journey. And of all songs, Color of Noise, it's about the spirit of acceptance, self-love, and just being in the moment, letting them take it and run with it, making the composition something that I could have never imagined. And you're going to hear this brother do that, yeah. featuring the great Mason Gidry.
Mason Gibbs, y'all. Mason Gibbs. Simon Martinez. One more time for Ina, Ophelia, and yeah. Michelle, for yeah. Thank you all so much. This is Colo Bar. Now, before we get out of here, I wanted to do one more. Um, whew, man, what's wrong with you, bro? Yeah. 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 Oh, Jesus. He's like, I'm good. That's right. Yeah, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> Arrogant. Oh, no. Um, going to end on a chill vibe. Uh, show love to a brother of mine, a good friend. Um, he's amazing musicians, you know. Had me up here emotional playing it last night. Um, uh, I don't talk about him that you know often, so it's it's kind of good taking a, a moment to show him proper love. I was a musical director for Maxwell for about ten years, um, and uh, he was such a is and uh, just an incredible brother, incredible friend. He and his best friend, Ha David, you know, they were so gracious, you know, when Chris Day first introduced me to them. And uh, I was working on a Gretchen Parlato album. We were doing, what's the album that we were on? Dream, yeah, in a, something like that. Yeah, one of those albums, right around the corner. And they were patient. They said, whatever you've done every night, just, just come. And I would just walk around the corner. And uh, th that ended up being Black Summer's Night. And uh, we recorded that album within a couple of days. And um, what I love about that brother is how, you know, accepting he was, you know, of us and gracious. You know, uh, my good brother Robert Glasper, Chris Day, they will tell you, like, you know, Maxwell had us all in his band, and uh, we'd be doing. He had, you know, number one songs at that time, and in the middle of that, he would go into vibes of our stuff. We were in front of Mandela, and he'd be like, "Yo, let's do a little bit of that message of hope." You know, uh, he, he was that kind of person. Um, so I uh, wanted to do a little song, you know, I'll show my brother some love and on a song called uh, Pretty Wings. Again, thank y'all for coming out. Yeah. Hope y'all enjoyed this journey. Come out more. I want to see y'all beautiful faces. Thank y'all for y'all energy. And uh, we hope you tip the Blue Note staff. Thank you, Blue Note, for having us. We're excited to have a few more sets. And again, I hope to see a few more. Beth, happy birthday. Once again. All right, here's pretty much.
Thank you.